Did your orthodontist just tell you that you need surgery? Time for some PFOing so you know where you're going. Hey everybody, it's me, Dr. Ryan Packard. I'm here with a special guest and we're here to talk about surgery. Yes, I said it. Surgery is kind of scary, at least when you hear it for the first time, it's pretty scary. So we just want to talk about why we consider surgery to help us with our bites, teeth, straight teeth, all those things. I invited a special guest who recently made the journey herself. Introductions now. Hello. Okay, why don't we tell the world who you are? My name is Elizabeth Mika. Yes. Elizabeth, Elizabeth just recently Recently, not just recently, about how long ago? Um, almost a year now. Almost a year, okay, since she went through surgery. We're gonna talk just briefly about our process, what happened, why. We'll show you some pictures, and then we're gonna show you her teeth, and she'll tell you about her personal experience, what she was thinking, maybe the conversations that her and her parents went through, and we decided what we were gonna do, and hopefully that will be helpful. So let's start with where did we begin? Why do we even recommend surgery? Okay, so this is how Elizabeth began. We have what we consider the orthodontic ideal. And that means that our teeth are aligned a certain way and they fit together a certain way. Sometimes though, you can have teeth that are lined up the way that they should be lined up, but they still don't fit together. And it's because of the way that our bones grew. So we can see here that we have our top bone here and our bottom bone here. And in part, the way that they have grown is preventing our teeth from coming together. Some of our teeth come together here here, but they don't come together through here and they touch in the back here. When we look at the front, when we tip it down, we see that we're in a little bit of an underbite, right? That means that our bottom teeth come in front of our top teeth. So for something like this, to get everything to fit together, one of the best options, most predictable options is surgery. There's only so much that orthodontists can do. Just braces, rubber bands, try and pull your teeth together, taking out teeth, like all those things could help. But as far as getting us to the ideal fit, of the teeth and the alignment of the teeth, no spaces and the way that it affects our profile, sometimes surgery is the best option. Normally you go through surgery by visiting or working with an orthodontist and an oral surgeon and they go through their process. So let's take a walk down memory lane with Elizabeth to see about her experience. You can obviously see now why we may have elected to do something like surgery, but let's talk about it with Elizabeth. Tell me, before you had orthodontics and surgery, was there anything challenging about the way that your teeth and what 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 did you see as the problem well it was very difficult for me to eat especially things like hard meats like steak since I only had the two back teeth that were actually touching it would cause a lot of strain on my jaw and it would hurt when I would eat steak and I was also the slowest eater in my family okay so first of all if you're from Texas you can't eat steak that is just unacceptable all right second is yes when your jaw bones don't fit together well enough that you only have a few teeth touching it can really limit your function. Clearly though, Elizabeth is still alive and uh, you know, despite her not being able to eat steak effectively, she was still you know, a healthy young woman and uh, we're not talking necessarily about something that is life or death, but this was something that bothered her. What about, is there anything else that was a problem as you saw it? Other than just the look of the teeth, that okay. was pretty much it. So sometimes the way that our teeth fit together, the jaw bones, when they grow, they can really affect cosmetics. It's how you smile. And so trying to get it all to fit together can affect both cosmetics and function. Okay, so when we talked, do you remember when we talked, it was a couple years ago, when we talked initially, what were your first thoughts when we talked about the potential for surgery? It was a bit scary at first, um, cause especially since I've never done something like that, but after everything, it was definitely the right decision. For those of you who get the surgery option, just know that you know, we're not crazy, we're not crazy, but it can be a little bit scary. So we sent you to a surgeon, you had a visit with them, mm -hmm. right? And uh, did they help you feel any better? Or do you remember at the very beginning? How was that? Is that yeah. still like, like, whoa, they want me to do surgery, seriously? It was still a bit crazy, but after the like explanation of everything, it made me, it calmed down my anxieties about it. Cause it's like, all right, so they actually have a plan. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yes. All right, so the way that we did our journey, and this doesn't apply to everybody, but very common approach is you get the braces first and you start moving the teeth around to try and get them to line up properly. Sometimes you have to take out teeth to help with the surgery. Um, that's a plan that you and your orthodontist would make. Then once you've been in the braces, you've lined up all the teeth, you're basically ready for surgery and you go into the surgery. So sometimes the surgeon, based on their plan, they, they may do you know cuts or adjustments on the top.
top jawbone and the bottom jawbone, and then they, you know, put it all together. We're gonna take a peek at uh, Elizabeth's x-ray just to give you an understanding of what was done. Tell us about the surgery itself. Do you remember going in that day or do you remember coming out that day? And I do remember going process. in. We got to the front desk, um, we waited in the waiting room as usual. Then I was let into a room and where they gave me a little bit of a shot to make me go to sleep. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I remember being rolled away to wherever <laughs> I was going and that's pretty much where like the memory stops because I don't remember Modern where I medicine. went. I don't remember falling <laughs> asleep at all, but I do remember waking up. I remember feeling very swollen and numb in the face. Yep. I also remember having um, some stuff on my hand, uh, probably stuff to track my pulse and all that. Okay, okay, yes, yes. I remember my throat hurting a lot because they had to like put a tube down my throat. Intubate you, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so the throat hurt. Do you remember talking about this kind of, these kinds of things with your surgeon? Did they describe like, you know, what, what some of the risks or anything like that were of doing the surgery? Does that sound familiar? Kind of a while um, ago. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> I don't, I remember he said there weren't really any life or death risks it was just a lot of complaints about numbness and okay, especially yeah. like the throat hurting and stuff and say saying that the like swelling would take time to go down and that the biggest thing was that the numbness because the way they did it he said that the nerve in the jaw would get exposed and when it gets exposed to oxygen it kind of like shrinks back and like goes numb mm. and he said that that's the biggest complaint that they people would give them was that the numbness could last for up to about a year. So actually my jaw is still numb, but as normal. So it should be done by the time it gets around the same time I had surgery. Okay, so the numbness, right? Cause you're going through the bones, you got nerves in there. And when you're adjusting those bones, you can expose the nerves or damage, the nerves can be damaged and they can lose sensation and become numb. And so sensation, loss of sensation is probably one of the most common issues associated with surgery. But there was some swelling. How long do you, do you remember how long it took for the swelling to go down or feel like your your jaw and your throat went back to normal? How, how long was that process? And what were you doing? Were you eating normal foods during that time? Were you, a lot of smooth smoothies, a lot of ice cream. What are you talking about? So I believe the swelling went down after about two to three weeks at least. Could have been a bit longer than yeah, that. Yeah, two to three weeks is pretty quick. Yeah, I do remember I did have to have a lot of smoothies because I was on like a liquid diet. A liquid diet. Yeah, so I had to have a lot of smoothies. Uh, my dad got pretty clever and he got um, soups and he put it into a blender and just blended up the soup. Look at that, look at that. So it can be done. You can figure out ways to deal with it. So that, that definitely is gonna be a modification. If you go through surgery, I mean, it's a big deal, big ordeal. You know, your bite and all those things, the swelling, the sensations, they're just gonna be different. You, you probably have to adjust your diet, like blending soups. <laughs> Anything else you found unique about the surgery or about the process afterwards? Um, did you find afterwards that you, did you ever have the thoughts like, oh my gosh, why did I do this? Did you ever, did you ever have that thought? No, actually. Never had that thought? No. Okay, so this is great. This is great. So now we've got some insight. What about your parents? Did they say anything? They were like, what are we doing? <laughs> No, it's just complete competence the whole time, okay? So great explanation, great insight into the surgical experience. Now, let's show you where she went from again and where she is now a couple years, a few years later. I think we're about two or three years, right? Aren't we? Yeah, two or three years? Yeah. So let's check it out. Here's the big reveal right in her mouth. You got to see it on the computer, but here is Elizabeth. All smiles now. Look at that. How do you feel about eating steak now? <laughs> very good. Yes. Surgery is a very reasonable option. It is, it is a big commitment. And so it has to be worth it. You need to find a provider and a surgeon that you can communicate with and feel good about what you're doing. The results can be fantastic, but it's a lot of work. And uh, in this case for Elizabeth, it was clearly worth it. Yep. Do you have any thoughts or advice for people who are considering surgery? It's not as scary as a lot of people would probably say. Definitely a bit of a hassle, just if you're, especially if you're going to a hospital that's a far away place. Okay, okay but it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. So anyways, not very many people go through surgery. Uh, one, because not ever, there there are much fewer people that have jaw bones that fit together like Elizabeth's did when she started. Most people's jaw bones kind of grow together naturally, but you could be one of those individuals. There's things that we do surgery for like underbites, like severe underbites or overbites, what we call overjet, lower jaws that are super far back. Sometimes the only way to fix those as adults is through surgery. If you have like a lot of gum 
gum tissue on top, your top teeth, sometimes your jawbone grows way down. And an easy way to fix that is by taking your upper jaw, pushing it up through surgery. Very predictable options. Obviously a lot is involved. It goes into the surgery. So be prepared for some serious time commitment, maybe from the surgical aspect and the sensations, right? You might lose some sensation for a while. You might have to adjust your diet, but it could be totally worth it. So congrats to Elizabeth and her pretty new smile. Thank you for participating in our video. You're welcome. Hopefully you like the video and feel enlightened so that if you are offered the opportunity to go through surgery, you might just say, okay, well, maybe this is the best option for me. Anyways, that's all we've got. Just a little PFO in so you know where you're going. We're out.